Hello and welcome to the Comlex Instant Review. Let's talk about scabies. It's caused by Sarcopathies scabie. Patients present with severe itching. It's highly contagious and mild boros under the skin are visible, leaving erythematous boros, particularly in the intradigital webs, axilla, and groin. And the risk factors include homelessness, um, healthcare workers, and the diagnosis is basically um, by microscopic examination of skin scrapings. Treatment will be topical, lindane, and permethrin, okay? Very commonly seen in the outpatient setting. Next, we're going to review pharyngitis. With pharyngitis, what is the diagnosis? Well, rapid strep test should be done, and if it's negative, then throat cultures. Treatment will be penicillin, and if it's penicillin allergic, then patients get erythromycin or cephalaxin. But what are the key manifestations clinically? You need sore throat, fever, chills, cervical lymphadenopathy, pharyngeal exudates, and petechiae. Those are specific criteria that you should keep in mind when talking about pharyngitis. Now let us review otitis externa. Well, with otitis externa, the um, clinical presentation is a person with ear pain and discharge. Um, and what happens here is that the Pseudomonas aeruginosa is responsible mainly in diabetics or um, in patients who don't have proper control over their blood sugars causing an infection of the outer ear. Treatment is with IV antibiotics such as ciprofloxacin. Next we want to talk about sinusitis. Sinusitis is diagnosed clinically. The best first test if the boards ask you is a maxillary sinus x-ray. Okay, maxillary sinus x-ray. And this differs from pharyngitis on symptoms. You have nasal congestion, discharge, post-nasal drip, and facial pain. The risk factors are smoking and the treatment is with decongestants. If it's severe, then prolonged antibiotic use can be recommended. Some of the bugs responsible are strep pneumonia, haemophilus influenza, and moroxella catarralis. Keep in mind that with sinusitis, you would benefit from understanding the anatomy, especially the ethmoidal anatomy, um, the orifice of the maxillary sinus, and understand that the maxillary sinus is the most common location. Next, let us review bronchitis. Well, how do you make the diagnosis? That's through chest x-ray. The treatment is usually self-limited, does not require uh, any specific treatments, but strep pneumonia, haemophilus, and moroxella are the most common bugs causing um, bronchitis. And patients have a chronic history of smoking, and on physical exam, uh, what happens is that the uh, difference is seen with the inflamed bronchus in bronchitis. Pneumonia. Well, community-acquired pneumonia, you're going to uh, mainly look at signs such as acute or subacute onset of cough with fever and purulent secretions, rigors, chills, fatigue, so more systemic signs uh, as opposed to pharyngitis and chest x-ray will show parenchymal infiltrate with evidence of consolidation. Those are the keywords. Sputum gram stain and culture may not be very helpful. So first step if they ask you for, sign, uh, for um, community acquired pneumonia, go with the chest x-ray. In patients who require hospitalization, there the blood cultures need to be drawn before antibiotics are given. And additional tests include arterial blood gases, the complete blood count, electrolytes, kidney functions, etc. Treatment will be mainly to look at empiric uh, forms such as macrolides or quinolones and with community acquired um, you also want to make sure that the patient has adequate fluids and oxygenation. Nosocomial pneumonia on the other hand will be due to gram negative rods like Pseudomonas klebsiella and this is due to a risk from aspiration and um, altered levels of consciousness and what happens here is that uh, the treatment for nosocomial pneumonia should be done mainly empirically with a broad spectrum antibiotic like piperacillin and tazobactam. And that's a one you want to remember. Keep in mind also that patients would benefit from the pneumococcal vaccine if they're uh, greater than 65 years of age, diabetic, immunocompromised. And with Legionella, which is another organism that causes 
pneumonia mainly um, through outbreaks of water which is contaminated. What you want to look for is fever, cough, malaise, headache, vomiting, and in addition to that on diagnosis you will find that the urine Legionella antigen is positive. Treatment is with erythromycin. So just to review some of the medications, with community acquired pneumonia you get the chest x-ray and empiric treatment can start with macrolides or quinolones like azithromycin or levofloxacin. With severe uh, community-acquired pneumonia requiring hospitalization, make sure you give the patient oxygenation, fluids, and IV levofloxacin or IV ceftriaxone plus a macrolide like azithromycin, so the combination. With nosocomial, you want to protect against Pseudomonas and Klebsiella, um, and in these cases, the leading medication is going to be um, one of the combination drugs like piperacillin and tazobactam. With, again, um, Legionella, you want to make sure that you uh, put the patient away from the contaminated water source, get the urine Legionella antigen, and the treatment is with erythromycin. Now, lung abscess is another high yield topic that we can cover quickly. The diagnosis is through imaging, and tissue biopsy is usually not needed. Patients have foul smelling productive cough, that's the key sign here with weight loss as well. Treat it with clindamycin, okay? Um, penicillin can also be used, and sometimes if this doesn't work, then surgical drainage is recommended. Now that was a quick board review of pneumonia and some of the high yield respiratory infectious disease you are likely to see on the Comlex and the USMLE board exam. Please visit comlexflashcards.com for additional board review lectures, and good luck in your preparation.